Well, that was a hiding. Bristol 48, Bath 3. I don't know what else to call it. I'd be pretty disgusted if I was a Bath fan. I'd be pretty elated if I was a Bristol fan. But potentially, the game could have even had a bigger scoreline. Honestly, man. Like, the last points Bristol scored were in the 52nd minute. Foot off the gas. Uh, I haven't seen what um, Pat Lamb has had to say after this one. But I would imagine he will certainly still find some stuff where they maybe let themselves down a bit. Which sounds ridiculous given it's 48 points to 3 in like a proper derby between two teams. Which is supposed to be, you know, a proper battle, a proper close game. It was absolutely one-sided. I'll go over some of the key points, but it's pretty much just try after try after try for Bristol. There's nothing much doing for Bath. The stats are a horrendous read if you're a Bath fan, but we'll still go over them. And um, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on the game. I mean, the defending for Bath was at times just pathetic. And I mean, the Bristol guys are good. You know that. You got Rad Radra, you got Piatau, you got Piers O'Connor, who's been in top form. You know, you got guys all around the park. Urin gets man of the match, he gets a try. Um, there's class all over the park, but man, you got to make your tackles. Goodness sake, it was pathetic. Um, Johan Lloyd had a pretty good game as well, running the show at 10. Big cutout pass from him, sits at the first try for Morahan out on the right wing. Like proper, proper 20 meter pass. It was really good stuff. Missed the conversion though out on the sideline, so 5-0 after about 4 minutes. And then the second one is to Piatau, only a few minutes later. It's Piers O'Connor who goes through the gap. He gets it to Morahan, who gives it to Piatau, and it's all too easy, is the note that I've written there. And apart from a very early stint, while it was still 2-0, oh, sorry, um, nil all, like Bath actually down Bristol's end, for a couple of minutes, it was just all Bristol. It didn't last any length of time. That being said, Bristol, not Bristol, Bath were a bit unlucky with some of their guys kind of coming off as HIAs. There were guys coming off, like McConaughey, I think, came off pretty early. Falatau had to come on pretty early. So they, they did, like... I mean, it's not going to make a difference in this game. But, yeah, things weren't going their way. Um, Priestland kicked a penalty on 16 minutes to make it 10-3. And 16 minutes, 10-3... My, thought, my thoughts were, it's lucky that it's 10-3. 10-3 is still striking distance. You get one converted try, you're back to even Stevens. 10-3, you're lucky. It was a good kick, like long kick from Priestland. But yeah, absolutely smiling all the way to the bank to be at 10-3. Lucky. Didn't last long though. Uh, Yoan Lloyd kicked one to make it 13-3. Good kick from him. Uh, good faith shown in the team, like uh, from the team for him as well to take a pretty long shot. It was pretty much out in front, but a solid distance kick. After he'd missed the first two uh, conversion attempts. At 24 minutes, they flash a stat up on the screen which shows it's been 255 run meters to 33. This is why I'm saying 10 3 was a good scoreline for Bath at the time. Um, 27 minutes, Andy Yuren gets his try. It's a line out move. This is the one where I think I was shaking my head more than any other for the defense. So it's a line out move. They maul, I think it goes back blindside. And Yuri gets the ball, and just nobody touches him. I was doing a live stream with the guy, and guys, guys are making a live stream at the time. Guys are making jokes about social distancing because nobody gets near him. Ben Spencer, I think, was one of them. Just flat-footed, like really pathetic, like really bad. Like it is pretty rare for me to go that kind of hard on the defenders because I know it's a tough job. But man, it was bad, really bad. Maybe it's just good from uh, from Yuri. 31 minutes, Priestland makes matters worse by getting yellow carded for a deliberate knock-on. My dad was watching with me. He's shaking his head saying that's pretty soft, but that's just the way the game is ruled these days. If your hand gets in the way of a pass and you weren't in position to catch it, you're probably going to get yourself into a bit of strife. Sure enough. And the pain was to double down with him in the bin because uh, Byrne gets two tries, one on 34 and one on 38. Um... 
Uh, and the, the first one was really bad as well because Bristol were just tossing it about and their hands were bad. They were dropping it backwards. It wasn't any knock-ons. But they were just having a fling about and it's like Bath were just kind of passively waiting to react to what happens rather than trying to close them down. I don't know. It was very bizarre to watch. Um, you did get to see Thokana Singer put in a try-saving tackle on Nathan Hughes at one point. And they, they checked it to make sure it wasn't a shoulder charge because he was running down the sideline. And Thokana Singer came in and uh, really whacked into him, but he just like wrapped enough arm to make sure it was a, a tackle, not a shoulder charge. But that was like one of the few good defensive moments for Bath. It's one of the few notes that are Bath-related rather than them conceding points. Um, the second try for, for Burn on 38, it's just a maul and it's really poor defense. Like the defense is just nowhere. Half time. The stats, possession 80-20, territory 84-16, run meters 418 to 42. Tackles, Bristol's had to make 26 and they've missed six, which is not great numbers. Um, Bath in the first half missed 30 tackles. That's more than you would usually miss in an entire game. 30 tackles is phenomenally poor. It's like missing one and four, I think they were at the time. Just so, so bad. They've conceded 11 breaks and made one. They, uh, they end up conceding 21 points during the yellow card because uh, Randrader gets one pretty much straight after halftime. And that's another one, just social distancing. He does this like a simple step. He makes Jonathan Joseph look ridiculously average. Matavesi, his former Fiji teammate, makes him look like a fat bloke in the park. And he just runs him for a try. I know Randrader is world class. But man, nobody even got near him. Absolute joke. Um, yeah. Anyway, I wrote Joker as well. I wrote JK because bad. 21 points during the yellow card. Uh, Will Capon looks to have got a try in 51 minutes. Uh, there's a maul. And he goes over, but he's not able to force it down. He gets a bit of a drop going on. The TMO spots that. But they go back for a yellow card and penalty try anyway. So that's the last scoring of the game. Bayless gets yellow carded. And it's a penalty try to... Um, to the Bears, yeah, it's um, it's pretty bad. I mean, from there though, Bath at least managed to get some ball. Like the last fifteen minutes, they had probably the more of the ball. They weren't looking very fluid in attack. At least they didn't concede any points in the second yellow card. At least they did get some ball. They did get within like two, three meters of Bristol's line a couple of times, but weren't able to convert. So maybe Pat Lamb will be happy to keep the 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 Bath guys trialless. But he probably won't be happy with the final 15, 20 minutes anyway. Final stats finished. Position 65, 35. Territory 64, 36. Run meters 793, which is really high for one game. I mean, you've seen higher, but it's pretty high to 130, which is very low. Bath end up missing 45 tackles all up. 45 tackles in one game. Clean breaks finishes 15 to 1. Remember, they had that clean break at halftime. So Bath, despite having... A lot more ball in the second half than they did in the first half. I just not able to crack Bristol's defense. Um, individuals, Rand Rounder has 140 meters run. Purdy has 135. Hughes has 88. Goodness me, the guys were just running right. You and I forgot to check out how many he got, but like I mentioned, man of the match. Priestland missed seven tackles. And remember, he was off for 10 minutes. He made three. Pretty bad numbers. Uh, Dunn, though, if you're looking for one bit of good news, made 18 out of 20. Like, that's a solid effort. But bloody hell. Embarrassing. I know Bristol's top of the log. Bath had two yellow cards. But man, you can't be getting beaten like that. That's really bad. Really bad. Really well done for Bristol. You guys are looking the business. Bristol, Wasps, Exeter, they're all looking like, like top, top teams this year. I look forward to seeing those guys play each other. Bath, they've got to have a look at what's happening at the top. Maybe the coaching needs some changing. I don't know. I'm never one to be kind of uh what's the word for a knee-jerk reaction but i mean bath season has not been going well this year so something's a bit rotten something is rotten anyway you guys will take care of yourselves um england rugby stores having all kinds of sales on i think they've got free shipping on stuff over 39 pounds if you want to grab something use the code i think it's fans 39 i'll check it and put it in the description or a comment if you guys want to get yourself some England gear. They're doing like these retro jerseys, which are actually pretty good. Someone mentioned in this in the live stream, Bath's jersey is quite nice. It's just the performance level was not. Uh, Bristol 
one of these days I'll get your team's jersey because you're a class team. There you go. Anyway, you guys take care of yourselves. Talk to you again soon. See you later.